Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a texture bombing shader that is applying textures from all angles across the surface with a li little bit of um, distortion on the seams and the ability to scale these images. So let's get started with a new instance of Houdini. Um, and I can show you how it works. There's a mesh with a point cloud on it, so you just scatter some points with normals and each of these points will be a, um, an image later on. So let's just create a geometry node which we can call mesh and it will only contain a mesh. I will take the toy and just disable its shader. One thing I should do is append a null called out and this should be it for the mesh. Next we create another geonode, call it PC for point cloud and inside we will refer to the mesh by creating an object merge and bringing in the out node. So next we want to create explicit normals. I will set them to points and I can optionally also blur these normals so that way um, they are not that sensitive to high frequency changes on the surface. So you can just say 20 iterations maybe and we, we can visualize this easily by scattering a few points without forcing a total count and it will import the normal attributes here in points and um, now you can play around with this and see what the blurring does, uh, whether it's useful or not and you can also change the point positions by changing the global seed. So we could try to avoid very steep angles like this that might be a bit critical but we'll see how it performs. Let's also append a out node again, so it's just a null, just like we did before. And these, this is everything we need on the sub level. Now um, we have to get some other things done like a camera. Um, you can bring this fairly close to the surface so we can judge better what's going on. And we will create a mantra PBR node as our render engine. The same stuff should work for Karma later on as well. But now let's go to the material mm, uh, material context and by the time we can already start a rendering I prefer a resolution of two-thirds for my screen but other than that I think we can start with a material builder. I will rename it to texture bombing because this is all it's going to do and you can see that's a bit of a surprise that we get our points again and I don't really want to see them in my rendering they just should be used um, for um, my texture bombing so we will just go to render and remove the asterisk in render visibility. So please make sure you do not disable the entire node like this because this will uh, cause problems for our shader. So it should still be sent to the renderer to make it work. Now inside the texture bombing we have first of all a bit of a demand for more space. So I will just drag my nodes over and zoom in so you can actually see what's going on and first of all we want to get the point cloud in so I can use um, near point which will just return one point only the closest point to the surface and we have to convert this world position to or the current space to the object space that way we should be able to read in the nearest point. For this to be um, brought in we need a parameter. 
I will call it PC and name it accordingly point cloud and we should set it to geometry string. Now I connect this already to near point and I go up one level and now we should just make sure that we um, bring in the PC out node and put an OP double column in front so it's clear that it's an operator. All right back to our node setup. I would like to um, just test whether it has worked by appending a random color based on this input. Let's just see this in action. So I just connect uh, the random color to a PBR diffuse shader, which is just a standard BSDF shader. And all of a sudden we should now get um, an update where you can see um, each point in um, a cell that looks pretty much like a um, yeah, Voronoi cell. So let's have a look. This is my PC in. I transformed the space, I called it near point, and now I should actually see something. Um, makes sense to apply the material and then it should update. Great. Now you see these cell borders are a bit strict. So let's just take the let's just take the transformed position and add some noise to it. So the noise will be based right on the transformed position like so and we will add it there and now you feel free to play around with uh, the frequency and the scale you have the both your amplitude and frequency and maybe octaves if you want to change the overall look but this should do and now we have to basically project images right onto this space so that's the more complicated part, I'd say. So let's just make some more room. And yeah, I think we can keep the random for later. But um, for now, I just want to know about the normal. So import point or point, yeah, import point attribute. And we set this to N to bring our normals in and connect it to our point cloud so it knows where to take the point cloud data from. Now let's just um, replace the color input by our normals and we should see some colors. They don't look like normals, but we can use them like normals. So let's just create a snippet now. A snippet is a place to use some VEX code, just like an attribute wrangle. And we want to work with um, a few things. First of all, I would like to bring in the normals. Then we can use the random value as a 3D normal or a 3D vector and I will also bind in a new matrix which is there for transforming. I will call it X form and use nine floats for a three by three matrix which supports rotations. And we will bring this into the snippet as well. Now for naming, I can just call this first variable N, the second one up and the third one X form. So this would just represent those. And in, we will now create some um, tangents for that are based on the normal. So you use a normalized cross product of the normal 
and an up vector. So this is our random up vector that should yeah, make our images be randomly rotated and the bitangent is just another cross product of the tangent and the n, the normal. Now we should be ready to create um, or to change the matrix. So X form will be set to the tangent as the first components, then N and then by tangent. And we have to invert this matrix. Otherwise the image will be distorted. And the matrix is what we are going to multiply with the position. So you take the transformed position and multiply it with the matrix. Now additionally we are going to create a parameter called scale. This will be a user parameter that is set to 2 by standard and goes up to 10. And this will also affect the image. Now what we get out here is again uh, the transform position which has been yeah, rotated around. We do not really care about uh, the position or the offset because the image will simply repeat. And in order to be able to feed this into a map we have to expose the floats. So we convert from vector to float and now we feed x and z into u and v. So y is going to stay empty or unused rather. And for later use we can middle mouse click the color map and promote its parameter. Now let's feed this into the color input of the PBR diffuse and see what this is about. Now oh, we left. We forgot a bracket to close it and uh, now it should work. Let's just, yeah, it's already done. So you can see all those uh, images are applied on the surface. We can uh, of course play around with the scale a little bit. And if there's some stretching we would have to examine whether our um, our up vector is too crazy or our normals are not that useful so you can uh, play around with all these settings but that should be it. Uh, it should react live in case it uh, has some hiccups you would just press stop and re-render it so you can also um, just see the effect just like that. Great, thank you for watching.